Hey, it's Amy. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Yes, I feel a little extra having a coffee and a protein shake, but it's one of those mornings. I still feel like I'm recovering from the race, which brings me to this video, which is about the Johnny Miles 10K race recap. It's been a long time since I've run a 10K and this is my second race now postpartum and I just have a lot of thoughts and feels. So grab a coffee or water or protein shake and let's talk about how my 10K went. It was so nice having a race that we didn't have to get a hotel the night before and that we could just drive the morning up. It was only an hour and a half or so away from us and that was very manageable. There was no expo. You could get your bib the day before, but we just relaxed, had some pasta the night before and went to bed nice and early. So I woke up around 5 a.m. and had a bagel with peanut butter and some granola. I wanted to eat a little bit more because I knew that the race was a few hours away. With my breakfast, I almost forgot that I also made a coffee and I talked about this in my 5k race recap where I'm like I don't like having coffee beforehand but since there was such a huge gap between the breakfast and the actual race I thought it was probably important to have a coffee so I would wake up and it wouldn't be too close to really impact me and I'm glad I did have a coffee so maybe I could drink coffee before a big race as you usually have a big gap but I don't know again still on the fence about coffee pre-race or long run you don't need a carb load for 10Ks, thankfully, but you still need to eat something and have something in your stomach. In hindsight, I should have had maybe more, but I'll get into that in just a few minutes. So Liam and I packed up Luke and we drove and we were hoping he would sleep in the car, but unfortunately he did not. So that wasn't the greatest, but it was a smooth drive otherwise. We stopped halfway about 40 minutes in and switched drivers so I took the first shift and Liam took the second shift and we drove there and we were going to park in this farmers market or nearby where we're we gonna get our bib but the roads were already closed they said it was gonna be open until 8 30 but they must have just closed it early or just too ready so we had to park thankfully there was another parking lot nearby that we could just pull in my brother's amazing and met us there so he could look after Luke while we did this race I really appreciate having family nearby and willing to do these crazy things so we can go run. It was super easy. There was no huge line to get our bib, which was awesome. This race was really affordable. Like you had the option of adding a t-shirt, which we didn't. And we got this cute little hat, which I'm gonna go find. Man, it's pretty nice. It's Nova Scotia, Johnny Miles running event. And it's not like, there's no mesh or anything, but it feels really nice. So yeah, I, I think we'll actually use this rather than the race shirts sometimes are kind of meh material and not the nicest, but yeah, we got a hat. Overall, I think it was only 35, we'll have it here, but $35 for like a timed chipped event. And there was water along the route and yeah, it was very affordable. So we get our bibs Then I wanted to feed Luke again just for the race so I could make sure he didn't get hungry while I was gone. We did the warm up with a few of our friends from the Road Hammers and then we lined up. 5k was at 9 a.m. and we were at 9 10 so we let the 5k go and then we were able to get into the start line. Liam and I had a plan that we were gonna stick the first 5k together at around four minutes a kilometer pace. We thought this is what we could handle for 5k and then if we had something more we'd push ahead or if not we'd hold steady and hold on for dear life. I hadn't been really feeling super confident leading into this race. I was just not in a great mental space like my legs didn't feel good during workouts or runs and it just felt really tired and I was kind of dreading this race just a little bit. I know it doesn't really matter like how fast I ran only to myself but I was honestly worried I wouldn't even be able to hold four minutes of pace. It's so weird I was feeling pretty good after the 5k which was a month ago or so and I was like oh yeah I'm gonna be so much faster by this race and I was running and I'm, I guess we had a cold but you know that it lingered for a while but still like I just didn't feel like I had a pep in my legs and that I was ready to run super fast for a 10k. I got really nervous the night before and the morning up. I have all these expectations. I'm very hard on myself and I want to, you know, crush PBs and do s run super fast and not let myself down, which is silly, but I just didn't know and I was just, yeah, I was just worried. Ooh. 
So we started the race and the first 2K were like four minutes like on the dot. It was awesome like looking at the split. However, I was just not in a good mental space for the first, probably the first half to be honest. I was just holding on to Liam and Matt and I was just praying I could just even get to four or five K and then I was gonna just like let them go and just jog it in. Honestly, I did not feel good. I was in such a negative mind space. I was like, how are you gonna run Chicago in the fall? You're so slow. You're gonna like give up. Oh my goodness, slow down, slow down. All these things going on in my head. Not helpful, I know. I guess four K, yeah, the first four K were on the road and then it went into the gravel and I was just, again, just holding on for dear life. Then we were on a corner right onto the gravel trail. It was a beautiful trail. Honestly, I would love to run it not on a race. And it was quite hilly in the park or in the trail. Let's go, guys. Let's go, guys. Your eyes that way, yeah, boy. Good job, Matt. I was thinking like, oh man, really was really rainy the night before. I was like, oh no, is the trail going to be kind of sloppy? It was a, some areas maybe, but it wasn't as slippery as I was worried about. So we ran and Liam actually pulled ahead of us. Matt and I just kind of were holding on <laughs> for dear life to Liam and he was, yeah, pulled up ahead and honestly I thought he was going to just leave us in his dust. Talking to him, he thought so too until around 6k and I was running and I'm like, feel quite as bad as I used to or it was. Hmm. So I started running and that's unfortunately when Liam was like, uh oh, he started not feeling great. So we kind of ran together for a bit. And then there was this metal bridge that was like, a I don't know if it, yeah, it was like the bridge that you had to cross over to get to where the bib was and the start line. And underneath there was like a pedestrian path. Unfortunately, this was metal and it was wet and we we're coming from a gravel, so I had to really slow down. And then after this metal bridge, it was like a really big hill. I was like, oh, thanks. So I just like went up the hill and then kept going. But that time I pulled ahead just a little bit. I wasn't going that much faster, but just just a little turnover and I was starting to feel better. Maybe it's because I'm a marathoner and it takes like a good 6K to like feel good and like, oh yeah, now I can run. All I was thinking was trust my training and smooth, relax and just keep going. And now I wasn't thinking so negatively. Hmm, maybe there's a correlation. <laughs> There was a girl ahead of me and maybe if I had been feeling a little better, I could have tried to like catch up to her and she ended up being third place. So could have maybe got third place, but that's beside the point. So we got to, I think, 8K and then we're back on the road and then it was just going back kind of along the road and then on the bridge and then back to the start line or where we, or where we had started. There were people like throughout the race and the trail was a little quiet but honestly it was a really really well organized race and at the end there's people cheering along the bridge and it was really nice. I came around the corner to go to the finish line and it reminded me of Boston when I was near the finish line and my stomach started to feel not great. I was like, oh no, I'm gonna puke. And so at this 10k I was like, I was gonna sprint but I, was like, I don't want to puke in front of all these people watching me. Like everyone's staring at you because I was alone and I just didn't want to be sick. So I I didn't sprint as much as I wanted to but I just like kept running. Like just get to the finish line. Just don't don't be sick, don't be sick. And then I crossed and I was fine. So after I crossed the finish line and didn't feel sick anymore, they handed me a medal and they had a really nice like station. They had a Tim Hortons coffee and then they had paper bags of food in them. I think there was granola bar, banana, and an apple in them. There was also a hot dog stand, which I didn't go to, but I kind of regret not getting a hot dog, but it was also 10 a.m. in the morning, so maybe a little too early for hot dogs, but when is it ever too early to have a hot dog? <laughs> my main concern was finding my brother who was watching Luke. Luke hadn't really napped well, and I guess we messed with his nap schedule, so it's our fault, but he was very happy after he had some milk, and then we were reunited, and yeah, it was really nice to see my baby after the race. My brother did an amazing job of watching him though. So after we got a photo at the end of the race, we just went to our cars and drove to a big stop. I don't know if that's just a Canadian thing, but it's like a restaurant attached to a gas station, very popular. And there was a lot of long lineup, which I realized, of course, it's Father's Day. Eventually got a seat and then had some food and then scurried back home and that was it. 
The weather was actually perfect. It was overcast, around 10 degrees Celsius, and maybe a little humid by the end, but nothing that I really noticed. I thought it was supposed to rain, so I had brought a hat just in case, but thankfully it stayed clear. I wore singlets and shorts, and it wasn't too hot, too cold. It was, again, just the perfect weather. Which is surprising, because at the end of June, it could have easily been very, very warm, which I think it has been in the past, so I'm very thankful that it d did not spike to 20 degrees, but stayed around the teens. For fueling, I didn't take any gels during the race. For a 10K, you don't really need any water or gels, only if it's super humid or warm out would you really need water or an electric lake drink. I think I had like a sip a very small sip of water at kilometer seven as I just needed something to, to distract me or just to, I was a little thirsty. Especially breastfeeding though, I always wanna make sure I'm staying hydrated and that's why I did take the sip and I just felt thirsty. So yeah, I didn't hit my goal. I wanted to go under 40 minute, but I did a 40, 23 I believe was the chip time, which isn't bad, but I was hoping to go under 40. I think if there hadn't been the gravel and that kind of metal bridge thing, I think I would have been able to sneak under 40, but at the same time, not bad. I was doing a run yesterday and on this run, I was like, when's the last time I had run this pace for this long? And I think the last time was, I was looking, was when I PB'd, PB'd my last 10K in this virtual half marathon I raced in Toronto. I think it was, yeah, May 9th, 2021. I did a virtual half marathon and I PB'd my 10K I think it was like 38 or 38 something and yeah which again I think I could run much faster than that if I wasn't pregnant and gone through all this but isn't that a long time ago like that and then I did Boston but Boston you go marathon pace which wasn't four minutes of pace and then I got pregnant in February of 2022 went through pregnancy and here we are in 2023 so yeah it's been a long time since I've really done a big effort or sustained effort for this long so that made me feel a little better I was pretty bummed how negative I got in my and got my own head about just like oh how hard it was and just yeah I didn't feel great about that. Now the race is a few days ago and I'm feeling a little better about just the whole experience and just yeah really happy that I did it and honestly my legs it's like they've been awoken awaken they've been awakened <laughs> and now I feel like much better and more confident. I know now that I can hold basically I mean I'll tell you my splits in a second, but basically I can hold around four minutes of pace for like 10K. That gives me so much confidence going to this build for Chicago. So I'm very thankful for that. My uh, blitz, and I'll have them here. Yeah, four minutes, four minutes, 404, 402, 358, 401, 409, 406, 402, 355. So yeah, pretty even except for that 409, which that was around that little hill that I was mentioning and the bridge, but yeah, I didn't slow down too much. I'm very happy with that, yeah. Yeah, my heart rate was okay. Like I, um, it got into zone five a little bit, but mostly zone four, which is really nice. Like it was, I was working, but I wasn't like in my max, max heart rate. Ah, <sighs> wish I could run faster, but this is the kind of mantra I had for myself going into this race was run or race the fitness that I'm currently at. There's nothing worse than always like straining or reaching to grab a pace that you used to or you want to and just makes you kind of miss miss out on running a pace that you can successfully and just feeling confident and strong and eventually I will be able to run that fast. I know it, it's, it's in my grasp, but it's just I needed to remind myself that I have to be in the present and run now and then eventually those times will get faster and I'll be back running even faster than before. Now I can recover from this 10k and start training for Chicago, yay! This race was also so special as it was Liam's first Father's Day. It was really fun to be able to race this together and we're basically the same speed right now, which is awesome. He really got me through this race as I just kind of like held on to him for about half of it. So I really appreciated having him there and he's so strong and I'm super proud of him as a father and as a runner and of course a person in general. And yeah, it was really fun to be able to do this as a father. Father's Day kind of celebration. 
So I have a few takeaways from this race. Considering it's my second race back postpartum, I'm very pleased with how it went. If I were able to change anything, there's a few things I would have probably done a bit differently. Since there was such a big gap from when I woke up to the race, I think I should have had a gel like 30 minutes before the race start. I just didn't think of it and I was like, oh, I'll be fine. But in the first two or three kilometers, I think part of my problem of why I wasn't feeling good was I was hungry. Like my stomach was kind of feeling icky, but I think if I had a gel and had some food in me, I would have felt much better. Secondly, to have a plan that when it gets hard to somehow flip over to something positive, like thinking about how strong I am or thinking about maybe changing my mindset or focusing on something like my form or something else not like how terrible I'm feeling. Those are really the only things I would do differently next time. I think I ran exactly the, the fitness that I'm currently in. I did a pretty evenly split. Like I didn't kind of do a negative split, but I was pretty even. Only a short little hill that got me, but otherwise pretty consistent. I wasn't sick at the end. Yay, <laughs> so that's nice. And overall, I'm very happy with how it went. I would totally do this race again. I just have to remember that there is like a trail part and a few hills, but just take that into consideration. But it was really well done, really well organized and affordable and close by. So hit all the, all the checks. That's my cue, so I better wrap up, but I hope you enjoyed this race recap and I will sure to share any more races that I do with you and happy running and I'll see you next time.